Tonight, near the beaches of Daytona, two rivals collide. For the Falcons, going for win number 20 with a titanic challenge in their way. It's Eastern Florida and Daytona State. Welcome inside the Lemoran Center. Everybody, great to have you with us. We get set for NJCAA Volleyball here in just a few minutes as you are looking at the Eastern Florida Titans. A rivalry game. They'll be wearing the white tonight, taking on your Daytona State Falcons in blue. So it's the Titans of Eastern Florida taking on the Falcons out of Daytona State as we welcome you courtside, everybody. Drew Felios alongside the sports marketing manager, Shannon O'Neill. Shannon, no matter what sport these two teams play in, it's always a treat. Tonight should be awesome, though, on the volleyball court. What are we looking for? Yeah, tonight I think is going to be a great match. We've got these two teams coming together, conference rivals. It's getting the near the end of the season. We've got a lot on the line. It's going to be a great game. All right, the Titans, an extremely talented team as Eastern Florida will look for the upset here tonight. And they've got several players who will play at the next level, including Kylie Hurst wearing number three, the middle blocker and setter, sophomore, tremendous talent. Out of Greeley, Colorado, she actually played for the club that head coach Andrea Rasmussen coached for before coming to Eastern Florida. That combo has continued here. Andrea doing a great job. She is actually the wife of men's soccer coach Oliver Twelve Trees at Eastern Florida. And on the other side for Daytona State, they are led by Laura Kurtz wearing number one. The freshman from Germany has been special, Shannon. She is great. Laura has been leading this team this year. She's leading the team in points and kills. She's all over the place. She's doing great. Also keep an eye on Urelis Rios, the sophomore libero. And there's Laura Stiegel in her fifth season. Took her first head coaching job at age 24, one of the best in the business. Husband Randy, the head baseball coach at Embry-Riddle. It is an all-sports family Laura is a part of. Coach Diggle's got the Falcons with uh, one of their best seasons so far in the program history, so it's been a great year. So Daytona State comes in ranked number 14 in the latest NJCAA poll, number four in the regional coaches poll, and third place in the Mid-Florida Conference behind Polk State and the College of Central Florida. But it was a big loss last week to the College of Central Florida the coach Stiegel hopes this team can rebound from. That was a tough one, Shannon. That was a really tough loss. I mean, they did stretch it out to five games and uh, it looked like the Falcons had a real chance there, but unfortunately they did come away with a, a loss there. So Daytona State at 19-4 and 4-2 in the conference. <whistles> Two teams will come together, shake hands, and we'll get set for action. Eastern Florida 10 and 8 on the season, 2 and 4 in conference play. The Titans had a great start. We're actually ranked also for the first time in program history. As you see, Coach Stiegel, she was pumped up before this match, knowing that there's only one more regular season match at the Lemerand Center after this. So this is crunch time here for the Falcons. This is going to be a big night for the Falcons. We've got the game tonight, game on Thursday, uh, and then we're done for the regular season here. So it's, it's a big game. Daytona State took Wednesday and Thursday of last week off, wanted to get healthy in preparation for this one. We did have a couple of illnesses last week that did not help with the uh, College of Central Florida game. A couple of the players had the flu. We had one player with tonsillitis, so we're glad to have everybody back and healthy tonight. Yeah, Laura Kurtz was one of those players with the flu. Freshman's going to look to bounce back here tonight. Her offense still improving. And last time these two teams played, she shined. Nine kills, eight digs against Eastern Florida back on September 28th. So last time these two teams met, it was the end of September. Daytona State one handedly, three sets to none. It's going to be tough to duplicate that here tonight. As Summer Magliocchetti for the Titans sets it up and wonder why. 
Aaron Arbor in the back line for Eastern Florida, and that is up against the net. Danny Smith can't put it over, and it's a point for the Falcons. Emily DiStaffino serving. Ball gets on the deck. Rios puts it over, but it's a little bit wide. That'll be a point for the Titans. Mentioned the strong start for Eastern Florida. Ranked for the first time in program history, but the Hurricane, Hurricane Irma, that is a big setback. Canceled some games, threw this team out of rhythm, and things have not quite been the same as the Titans able to get another point. Yeah, both of these teams, along with the rest of the Mid Florida Conference, really had an interruption to their season from Hurricane Irma. The girls on the Daytona State team actually stayed with their coaches during the hurricane, which helped them come together a little bit. Here's Laura Kurtz now, the superstar out of Germany. She has taken on a huge role for this Titans team this year. And she has answered the bell every single time. There's a nice touch that time by Summer Magliocchetti. Kylie Hurst also, big factor for Eastern Florida. So this is Denise Smith, sophomore out of Vieira. And that's a miss hit that time by Taylor Garcia. You don't see that a lot from Taylor. She's, she's had a pretty good year. One of the, another freshman has really been leading this team. Shot by Kyra Ross. Red shirt outside hitter out of Jacksonville. She's had kind of an up and down year, but now as we're in the stretch run, I think her best volleyball is still yet to be played. Now front line, right side, kept alive by Cook. Here's Ross again, finds a spot right in front of the line. Daytona State team averaging 12 kills per set and 10 assists with that. And that will be a service ace. First of the match for Taylor Garcia. Two in a row for Garcia. Hurst on the serve. And it's an ace. So the Titans get one of their own. It was a good dive there from Sandra Hovels, but she wasn't able to get there in time. Eastern Florida coming off a big win, three sets to two. That was at Lake Sumter last Thursday. So they want to keep it rolling here tonight. There's a nice shot by Yasmin Cook, the freshman. Substitution now, as that's Gardielli's Loriano, freshman, center out of Riverview. Cook goes to the bench for the Falcons.
Left side now, it's Ross again. She has come out swinging tonight. Dominating so far for the Falcons. Kyra Ross out of University Christian. That is a sports superpower at the high school level. Here's Hurst now, the setter. Kept alive by Rios. Daytona State doing a good job defensively. Here in the first set, but finding a gap is Rachel Gunn. Eastern Florida tonight wants to run fast. As Coach Andrea Rasmussen said, it's a very diverse team. There's not really one or two players you can count on. They got so many that can hurt you. As Sandra Hubbles delivers for the Falcons. Ball of Fabian in now for the Falcons. And she goes back to serve. Sophomore out of Germany. Comes off the bench and really gives Daytona State a great spark. Barmack puts it over. Second shot kind of rolls along that net and it goes down. So Barnack goes to the bench and Aaron Arbor comes in. Miscommunication that time by the Daytona State offense. Emily DiStefano tried to get in there for that one. Arbor to serve for the Titans. Home team a little out of sync. Good opportunity for Eastern Florida here. Left side, couldn't get it over the net. And now it'll be a point for Daytona State. Here's Urelis Rios, who has been through so much this fall, Shannon. Urelis out of Puerto Rico. I don't need to say any more. Yeah, Urelis has done a great job of, uh, of being here with her team, but also, of course, uh, having her heart back in Puerto Rico with her family. She actually brought the girls together, and they did a little bit of a fundraiser a few weeks ago to try to get together some donations to send down to family and friends in Puerto Rico. I mean, another point for Daytona State. It is amazing considering the circumstances that this young lady has played the way she has played this season. It did not affect her play on the court whatsoever. No, she's put up another great year for Daytona State. You know, she was a standout player last year, and, and coming back on this team, she's really uh, continued to grow as a player. Nice run now for Daytona State. Four straight points for the Falcons as Rios is on a roll. Rios had 21 aces coming into tonight. There's a nice kill by Denise Smith. Lisa Pauser exits for the Titans. Smith, the sophomore out of nearby Vieira, transfer from Kaiser University. And that one's going to be hit long. Here's Magliocchetti. Falcons now work that left side. There's a nice block. Kylie Hurst combining with Denise Smith. Titans have put together some impressive points. This has been a game of runs so far. Both teams kind of trading shots, and that one's long. So Eastern Florida has not yet led just yet in this match. They could tie it here. That one's wide. Our officials tonight, Mark Mills is up top. Ricardo Cruz is our second official.
that's going to be an illegal set that time, so a point for Daytona State. Kept alive by the front line. Scrambling are the Titans. They find a way to get it over. Falcons attacking. That one's down as Taylor Garcia hammers away. Garcia has really made a mark on this team this year. She's been a great asset for the Falcons. Right side. That's an awesome answer, Yasmin Cook. Boy, is Cook is off to a great start, isn't she? She is. That's the uh, eighth kill for tonight for the Falcons. DiStaffino into the net. So it'll be a side out. Eastern Florida will serve. Trailing by four here, set number one at Daytona State College. Drew Felio, Shannon O'Neill with you from the Lemerand Center. Falcons trying to get a good swing here. That's sent back by Hurst. I want to think that this young lady is a middle blocker and also a setter. That is what you call doing everything for the team. Quickly put over by Garcia. Daytona State able to stay in command. Shannon, what do you see so far from Daytona State that you really like? I see a lot of focus. You know, they're, they're staying in the game. They're not letting a couple of errors get in their way. They're coming right back at it. Point That's a point by Rachel Gunn of Eastern Florida. As the Falcons closing in on 20 here and set number one. A very fast pace here tonight. As Delaney Smith, sophomore out of Orlando, will serve for the Titans. Meanwhile, Barnack checks back in. Falcons keep it off the floor. It's a big save. Along the back, his gun puts it over. Daytona State looking for a big swing. Cook delivers. The kill by Yasmin Cook. Point, Daytona State. It's the tenth kill of the night for Daytona State. Some assistance there from DiStefano, who was actually named the setter of the week for Mid-Florida Conference last week. I'll tell you what, if Cook continues to play like this, Daytona State's got something special heading down the stretch, and now an unforced error. So Daytona State starting to close in on a set one victory. Yes. Mishandled that time by the Titans. Another point for the Falcons, 22-16. Daytona State dropped a couple spots in the NGCAA poll after that loss to the College of Central Florida. It went from 12 to 14. So trying to make a statement here tonight at home as Gunn able to paint that back line, Point Titans. Smith heads out for the Titans. Alisa Pauser, the freshman, checks in. Here's Kylie Hurst serving. And yeah, this one's wide. Serving here, point, Daytona State. Cook heads out for Daytona State. And Loriano heads to the back line to serve. 23-17. Oh, that's a quick attack that time. And it'll be a point for Daytona State. So it's set point, 24-17. 
Ross able to get the point that seals the set. Kyra Ross and Yasmin Cook, tremendous in set number one as Daytona State wins it 25-17. So Daytona State up a set here at the Lemorant Center. Off to a good start. Eastern Florida had their moments in that first frame. There you take a look at the numbers for the Titans. Two kills, an ace, a couple of errors. They've got to shore up in set number two on the Titans side. And for Daytona State, anytime you have Ross and Cook playing the way that they played, you also have Taylor Garcia serving well. Things are going to go well for the Falcons. Yeah, this is really a, a very well-stacked team. I mean, you, you've got uh, a lot of great players coming in here and contributing. So Daytona State coached by Laura Stiegel in her fifth season. Victorious in set number one. We'll step aside, set number two, coming up in just a moment here from the Lemerand Center. Welcome back here to the Lemorant Center. Daytona State impressive 25-17 over the Eastern Florida Titans in set number one. Drew Felios and Shannon O'Neill. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first set as Daytona State threatened a little bit about midway through but able to get the critical points when they needed and good serves too along the way. Good job by Kyra Ross in that first set. Also, Yasmin Cook as well. Taylor Garcia serving well for the home team. So far, so good, Shannon. Yeah, it's been a great match so far. Daytona State stumbled a little bit there in the middle of the first set, but they were able to keep their composure and come right back in. Back to live action. Daytona State. Oh, good job by the Titans to keep the ball off the floor that time. Quick set. Nice dig by Eastern Florida. Played quickly by Magliocchetti. Letcher swing, Doug. And now Kurtz doing her thing for the Falcons. Oh, that was the best point of the match. That was fantastic. Daytona State, huge task of gelling tonight, getting back to business after that loss last week. Really took some steam out of them, and so far this team looks rejuvenated. Sometimes you need a little bit of time off. Got to step aside, kind of refocus. Falcons have done just that. I think the break did a lot of good for these girls. 
How about that hammer by Kurtz? Just wide, but that had a ton of velocity on it. Letcher back to serve now for the Titans. Ariel Letcher, freshman out of Sebastian. Slide run to perfection from Garcia. Great night for Garcia and Kurtz. Both of them were also big stars in the last game when the, the Titans took on the Falcons. Taylor Garcia, just a great story for Daytona State. Taylor's actually uh, training to be a paramedic. She wants to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a firefighter. Yeah, Laura Kurtz, the point. Yeah, Taylor Garcia studying to be an EMT firefighter, and you know, she's had great competition with Shelby Glosson this entire year. Just the epitome of student athlete here at Daytona State. Rios puts it over. And now the Titans working quickly. That's a nice job at the net by Rachel Gunn. That was a good shot. Here's Carly Gregory, freshman out of Wellington. 16 service aces. This is what she does well. And just as I say that, she serves one long. Now, if you are Eastern Florida, you cannot afford the unforced stairs here tonight. No, you definitely have to be on your A game coming against these Falcons this year. DiStaffino the dig. Now Kurtz played from the back line, and Laura Kurtz just pinpoint. Laura Kurtz had the flu last week, needed some time to rest up. She looks great here so far. Right side, tapped over by Hurst, and it's a point. Kylie Hurst, get this. It's Coach Andrea Rasmussen said you could ask Kylie to jump off the side of the building for a team. She would do it. That's dedication. <laughs> Selfless type of player. Big block, heads out. And it's another kill for Kyra Ross. Lisa Pauser, number 15 for Eastern Florida. Hasn't really been able to get going here so far. 6-3. There's a big swing. Pauser must have heard me on that one. Yeah. This is a very athletic, versatile player out of Brazil. And the best blocker along that front line for the Titans. Rachel Gunn hits it long. In comes Loriano once again. Oh, that was impressive. That was a big kill for Eastern Florida. Pals are a great defensive presence, but that swing right there says it all. Oh, she's got all the talent in the world and just a freshman. So now here's Aaron Arbor, freshman out of Stewart. Wipe the floor on the Falcon side. Homecoming week here on campus. Fun and festive as always, Shannon. Yes, this is the second year that uh, Daytona State has had a homecoming week. A lot going on, including this game tonight. How about Sandra Hubbles? getting up and putting that one down. She runs the slide really well. She does. Sandra's another key returning starter for us this year for the Falcons. Paula Fabian off the bench. Served in a really good spot. Good swing by Pauser though, it was undiggable. Like we said earlier, these conference rivals come together, you're gonna see the best game that they can each give, so.
Hauser heads to the bench. Magliocelli, the sophomore from South Fork High School. Here's Letcher. That one's not going over. The wall of Falcons there to send it back. Staffano and hobbles on that great block. Emily D. Staffino. Such a key for this Falcons team. Stetson commit. Taylor Garcia making it all happen. Game for the Falcons. Too tough to put back. Taylor Garcia. Now the lead is four. So far, so good for Daytona State. Really need this win tonight, and the defense starting to break down on the Eastern Florida side. Here's Rios. Another point for Daytona State. Tell you what, Urelis Rios, well, you know when she came in here to Daytona, they thought she'd be an outside hitter. But they realized she was a little too small for that. Yes. <laughs> Put her at that libero spot, Shannon. She has really shined. Yeah, she's really found her, her spot with the, that position. Kurtz elevated that time. Now the Titans coming right back. Letcher, good swing. Kurtz. Taps it over. Dug nicely by Smith. Letcher, a little bit too long. Five points in a row for Daytona State. So starting to pull away. Eastern Florida has got to turn it up here. Kurtz heads up and played at the net by Hurston. Easy tap. I think Eastern heard you on that one. <laughs> Let's to serve now. Take a look at that front line. It's Hurst. But Daytona State's front line right now, a little bit more consistent and just a little bit more heads up as DiStaffino goes back to serve and Cook will come in again for the Falcons. Tough block there from Eastern. Staffino now back to serve. The lead is now eight for the home team. Rios, nice dig. Cook a big swing. Arbor keeps it off the deck. Working quickly is DiStaffino. And it's another Falcons point. So Emily DiStaffino serving for Daytona State. Tough swing there, and that's Rachel Gunn. Garcia and Cook were right up there at the net, but unfortunately they weren't able to block that. Di Staffino, great set that time, and Garcia, the Thank point. Another dig by Rios. Ross. Another big hit from Ross. Yeah. So Daytona State has pretty much controlled from the outset here at home. 17-9 in set number two. Course play best of five. Tell you what, 
Yasmin Cook, she has come to play here tonight. She definitely has. Number 10, out of France, only a freshman. Right side hitter. Hurst puts it over. Now the Falcons try and attack that corner. What a job by Emily DiStaffino. That was a perfect touch for DiStaffino. Just put it right back there in the corner. DiStaffino coming from that top select club volleyball program in Oviedo. Ten point lead for the home team. Daytona State in command right now. Barnack can't get a big swing on it. Garcia over that back line and now Ross the tap. And it's another point, it's 29. Kyra Ross at a University Christian High School up in Jacksonville. Everything's starting to click right now for Coach Stiggle and her Falcons. Di Staffino set it up perfectly that time. Falcons should get another good swing here. Cook tried to tap it, was sent back. Ross up against the net. It'll be a point for Eastern Florida, but a great run for Daytona State. Now, this is a really competitive conference that Daytona State and Eastern Florida both play in. Of the five teams in the conference, three of them have been in the national rankings this year in the top 25. So it's a highly competitive group. That set is long, so just as Eastern Florida gets the ball back, a service error. Cannot afford those when you're trying to come back down double duty. There's Coach Stiggle. Now from the left side. That one, did it strike the antenna? I believe it did. And a point for Daytona State. Was wondering why Loriano just caught it that time. She knew that was up against the antenna. First, set not going to get it done. Falcons able to score again and now lead by 13. So set point, 24 to 10. Dance Loriano goes back to serve it for Daytona State. As this match has gone along, Falcons have just played better and better. Communication on this team is key. Look at that shot by Hobbles. She knew it was money from the moment she left her feet. Daytona State. 25 to 10 impressively. And set number two for your Daytona State Falcons. So if you're Eastern Florida, right now trailing two sets to none, definitely have a big hole to try and climb out of. Yeah. Titans really struggled in that second set, Shannon. They really did. You could kind of see a little bit of a communication breakdown there in the middle of the set, and unfortunately they weren't able to rebound from that. But they'll come back here in the third set and, and see what they can bring out, see what uh, Coach Rasmussen is able to put on the table. Meanwhile, Daytona State just keep doing what they're doing. Now one set away from their 20th victory of the season. There's the numbers for the Titans. Defense just had too many cracks in that second set. 14 errors as well. Tough whenever you're on the road. And on the other side for Daytona State, everything clicking, the offense running exactly like Coach Stiegel would want it to. Yeah, I think that that week off last week after the uh, College of Central Florida loss has been a real benefit to this team. Daytona State, 12 kills, 10 assists per set. The average coming into tonight, four aces to work off of. Look at the digs as well as Rios got it done defensively. Daytona State in command here from the Lemoran Center. We'll step aside and come back in just a moment.
Express yourself through the art of dance at Daytona State College. With a variety of classes offered in modern dance, jazz dance, and ballet, there is an outlet for your creativity. From beginners to more advanced performers, there is a place for you. Non-dancers and fitness enthusiasts will benefit from the stretch and placement class, featuring conditioning in a fitness class setting. For students with prior training and performance experience, the DSC Dance Theater performs at on- and off-campus venues. Limited scholarships are available. Great night so far for the Daytona State Falcons. They've got a two set to none lead here at the Lemoran Center. Drew Felios alongside Shannon O'Neill, the sports marketing manager here at Daytona State. Let's take a look at some of the highlights that we have seen. The Falcons, everything going right in that set number two, Shannon. Yeah, the Falcons really have been hitting up, firing on all cylinders tonight. Daytona State scoring early and often. Kyra Ross continuing to hammer away the defense stellar on their end had a good job by Alisa Pauser for Eastern Florida in that second set but not much else meanwhile Di Staffino and Hovels that combination really started to gel for the Falcons yeah, those two sophomores are definitely showing some veteran experience out there tonight so Daytona State ranked number 14 in the latest poll Looking like they are eager to move up. As we start set number three, Falcons come out swinging. Kurtz, her shot's dug. And now Laura Kurtz, that one tapped along the front line. And Arbor, the good dig for Eastern Florida as the Titans able to score the first point. That's something they haven't had, Shannon, a good start to a set for the Eastern Florida side. Yeah, that's some good momentum for them, trying to get going here in the third set, see if they can make a little comeback. Maglio Chetti. Good block along that front line. Kylie Hurst starting to be more active for the Titans, and a point scored by Carly Gregory. First time we've called her name tonight. Gregory's been another freshman standout for the Titans. Falcons got to make sure they continue to execute as Taylor Garcia gets the first point of this third set. In for the Falcons, number 10, Yasmin Cook. Yasmin Cook has been the weapon tonight for Daytona State. She just checked in. Arbor active along the back line right now for the Titans. Cook. The dig. Kurtz can't kill it. Titans really tracking where Laura Kurtz is at all times during this match. Here's Cook. Another point. The field by Yasmin Cook. Point. They want to stay. Yasmin Cook had a huge game in that 
College of Central Florida match last week. Had 15 kills in that contest. So she is really starting to establish herself as another block by Taylor Garcia. Garcia has been a brick wall at the net for the Falcons tonight. First lead in this third frame for the Falcons. That one tapped over by Kylie Hurston. We're tied at three. Titans definitely look like they came up fired up for this third set. Ariel Letcher, the freshman out of Sebastian, Florida, Sebastian River High School. Here's Kurtz. Big time play by Garcia, who's just the waiting for it. You know, Shannon, usually when opposing teams come in here to the Lemoran Center, the ceiling is usually a factor at least one or two times in a match. It hasn't been so far here tonight. Yeah, it has come into play this season for sure. In fact, Coach Stiegel says we count on our home ceiling for sometimes about two to three points per match. It can really affect the difference. That was Cook again. Coach Stiegel's had the, the great challenge of just trying to find consistency with this group. You know, they struggled with errors early on, some silly mistakes. But then the shot selection started to get better. Decision making has gotten better. And that's why Daytona State is having the season they're having. But right now, Eastern Florida has taken a two point lead here in set three. <laughs> Kyra Ross has brought the hammer tonight. Kill. Point. Coach Stiegel also saying the biggest key to her team's success is passing. If it can be as crisp as it has been tonight, there's no telling what this Daytona State team can accomplish. Here's Ross again. Went softly that time, and it got by Magliocchetti, who got on the deck. Ross has done a great job tonight knowing when to use the power and when not to. Yeah, there's a time and place for everything. That's right. Here's Garcia. And that's just why. So Garcia comes out. And the libero Rios comes on in for Daytona State. Right side, Cuck again, Smith, here's Barnack. Hubble's had a good look, just hit it right through that block. Cuck comes out, Lariano comes in for Daytona State. Staffino, right side, and there's that, and there's that ceiling. ceiling. I said at least one time it would have been a factor tonight. I, I think we just saw it. It's the Falcons' green monster. <laughs> Here's Loriano. Daytona State back on top. How about that dig by Rios? That was big time. Ross taps it over now. Here's Gunn. Lovells wants that slide again, and she has it. Hubbles had the perfect touch on that hit. Sandra Hubbles. The potential to play Division I volleyball is all there. 
player that certainly needs to be a factor here down the stretch. And a legal hit called on Eastern Florida. Well, Drew, there are some postseason ramifications on this game. Big time. Mid-Florida Conference playoffs start next week, and Falcons can get a win here. They'll be guaranteed at least a three seed going into the conference playoffs. Yeah, Daytona State has one more regular season match with Polk State. Right now, they're kind of in a three-team duel for that lead in the Mid-Florida Conference with Polk State and also with the College of Central Florida. But keep in mind, in the postseason, only two can go on. Correct. Shannon talking with Coach Stiegel before the match. You could just see the, the desire, the determination in her eyes, how bad she wants it for this team. This is one of the favorite teams that she has had in her short time here in Daytona. Just loves the personalities, the talent, and the work ethic of these young ladies as they score again. But the Titans can't get it over. Yeah, they really want to make it to that state tournament this year, and they've got a good chance. They've had a great season. Uh, that Polk State game and Polk State coming up here to Daytona State is going to be a, a big factor and a big momentum swing going into the postseason. Quick hit that time, kept alive by Hubbles. Hurst. Rios can't dig it this time, and it's a point for Jenna Barnack. Point Eastern Florida. Eastern Florida wants to make some kind of a run. It has got to come right now. As we'll clean up a wet spot on the floor, get a look at Ariel Letcher, one of the young freshmen for the Titans. He's talking about the personalities of this Daytona State team, though, and how they have grown as a team, Shannon. You know, this team, the offseason, went down to or up to Defusky Island in South Carolina. Spent about three, four days together since that Second retreat. Round, the Things just haven't really been the same for the better as Hubble scores again. They've really gelled. They've come together. They've realized who the leaders are. And right now, this is a well-oiled machine. They are definitely communicating well, acting well as a team. I think that that retreat was a big help, and, and then Hurricane Irma kind of gave them a second retreat, so uh, they're definitely working together very well. Falcons attacking, Hubbles! The hammer again. And did she touch the net that time? By Sandra Hubbles. No, she did. Point for Daytona State, it does count. Keep in mind at this level, when you only have two and three year windows, tough to get that chemistry sometimes. It is, it's definitely a different atmosphere in junior college when you don't have four years to really cement a team together. But I think Coach Stiegel's done a great job of putting a good team together who gels well and can get out there and, and win some games. Falcons. Playing well right now, leading by seven. Quick set over, and a good job by D. Staffino. She definitely got the hold on that one. D. Staffino had 740 assists coming into tonight. The Stetson commit. She is going to be something for the Hatters over the next few years. And right now, the serving takes over as Fabian able to score. Falcons trying to make quick work of their arch rivals. That one's wide. Another point for Daytona State. You know, the Falcons and Titans also met on the pitch last night down in Melbourne. Big women's soccer match. Went into two overtimes. And Daytona State came away with a big win. That was the first time that Daytona State has ever beaten Eastern Florida. They were trailing late, two to one, get a big late goal in regulation, go to the second overtime and get the winner. It was one of the best moments, I think, in Falcons women's soccer history, would you say? Definitely, this has been a, a big season for women's soccer. They went back up in the rankings today, cracked the top five again. They're having a great year, just 
one loss and looking forward to a, a good postseason for them. Ten point advantage for Daytona State. Closing in on what would be a sweep. Pauser. They need to get her involved a lot more. Lisa Pazzer will check out. Magliocchetti comes on in. Big things in the future for number 15. The Titans are working hard to stay in this match. Now Rachel Gunn will serve for Eastern Florida, trailing by nine, and the unforced errors tonight have been crushing for the Titans. It's tough when you don't play a clean game. Right side attack for Daytona State. And Taylor Garcia has played error free here tonight. Now Bates will serve. Freshman out of Peoria, Illinois, getting some action here in the late going. Rachel Gunn winds up. Oh, good job by Bates to get on the deck. The defense coming through. Rio sets it up. Glosson gets her first swing of the night. And that one drops down as Rachel Gunn was able to put it over. Defense wasn't ready for that one. Barnack back in. Arbor has a seat for the Titans. Eastern Florida, 10 and 8, 2 and 4 in conference play, and about to fall to 10 and 9 and 2 and 5 here if things don't turn around quickly. Time running out. Passing has not been crisp for Eastern Florida tonight. And now two points away. He is Daytona State. I think we're seeing a determined Falcon team tonight on a mission. Miss hit that time. Hubbles does get it over, though. And we've got a battle at the net. And it'll be a point for the Falcons. And it'll be match point. Taylor Garcia is back to serve. That is going to do it. Daytona State Falcons. As Daytona State easily cruises three sets to none over Daytona Eastern State Florida, 25 to 12 in that final set. Shannon, it seemed like as the match went along, the Falcons only got better and better. It did definitely seem like they were just working towards more and more, and they were really focused out there tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I think Urelis Rios really paced Daytona State. Her defense and her passing, just superb. Taylor Garcia, great performance. Emily DiStaffino, the passing was crisp. Sandra Hubbles working along the front line on the slides. And then you've got Ross and Cuck, who yeah. just teed off tonight. Oh, Kyra Ross was definitely out there with the kills tonight. Big force for the Falcons. Take a look Cuck at the... Right there with her. Two head coaches, Coach Stiegel and Andrea Rasmussen, discussing things as these two great rivals will certainly meet again. But tonight, this one belongs to Daytona State as they flex their muscle at home 
Only one more home match remaining here in the regular season as they'll take on Polk State this Thursday night. That's going to be a big match for the Falcons. Polk State is very well matched. Uh, it's a great team, another conference team that that win, a win there would be big going into the postseason would make a big difference in the seed for the tournament next week. So Eastern Florida, take a look at some of the final numbers for the Titans. Uh, this Eastern Florida team was coming off a high, a 3-2 win at Lake Sumter. Just really unable to string it together. They played well in bunches, but what really stands out there, Shannon? Yeah, that 24 errors, that's a tough to overcome for any team. So that, that definitely stood out tonight for the Titans, unfortunately. Meanwhile, for Daytona State, not many errors. 15 total, but the aces, the serving was outstanding. The kills, the passing, the offense just ran in precision tonight. 42 kills. It feels like Kyron Ross had at least half of those tonight. So it was a night full of highlights for the Falcons. Eastern Florida trying to attack early. Daytona State getting everybody involved. That was Cook. Had kind of an up and down year tonight. It was certainly up. And then at the net, Taylor Garcia coming through. Garcia, 14, just owning the moment here at Lemoran tonight. So it's been a fun night here at the Lemoran Center. Daytona State victorious as they improve to 20 and 4. Great job by our crew here tonight from WDSC. TV as always a first class job also Shannon O'Neill great job and a great thanks to all the hard work that you have done this season Until next time I'm Drew Felio saying so long from Daytona Beach